Hey yo, what is happening guys? This is the Lightning H8 coming at you with another video and today we are actually doing it. Yes, we are doing the review for Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind. Now of course, of course this is going to be a spoilerish type of review. I'll be going into depth of some stuff and then just easing over some simpler stuff. And yeah, honestly, let's just uh, dive straight into it. Let's talk about the story. The story of Remind follows Sora actually trying to save Kairi. And one thing that it opens up with is the Zigba and Luke Surd confrontation. Now, I love this scene because it leads so much into future titles because, well, it's such a big thing. Of course, if you didn't play Remind, it's a wee bit of a spoiler, but of course, it's a spoiler review. And of course, I put a timestamp uh, to when you can view the stuff that passed the story. I really love this because you get to play from different characters' perspectives, but I'll get into that a little bit more later on. I just love this story because it takes um, what happens at the end of the game, but still reuses the last parts of the game in a way, so it tells a more uh, interesting story. Honestly, story-wise, this was amazing, and when Sora saved uh, Kairi, it was really nice, and I just loved the story. It was pretty nice, it was way more in-depth than I thought it would be, so yeah, I really did enjoy it. One thing I really loved about the story the most was, of course, how they chose to actually interpret it, because it happened after the events of Kingdom Hearts 3, but still, Sora using... Um, Chirithi to actually go back and save Kairi, his only one shot, a and that's what I really loved about the story, when they said it's your only one shot, I thought if you die, the DLC is over, but then re I realized I'm an idiot, and that didn't happen, <laughs> so yeah, that, that was a good thing. Uh, one of my favorite scenes was this scene over here, where all the characters uh, come together, even after saving Kairi, this is definitely my favorite scene in the Remind, I guess you could say, uh, in the DLC. I really love it because it's all the characters we know and love and they all together and they fight Master Xehanort and it, it was a really awesome scene because well I grew up with these characters well mostly Sora uh, because Kingdom Hearts was my first ever video game and this DLC shows that well it was pretty good. But of course there was some confusing story elements within the original and Tetsuya Nomura basically gave elements to enhance the story for everyone so everyone knows what's going on. And I kind of respect that but I knew what was happening. I guess it was for the newer audience that came for Kingdom Hearts 3. One thing I loved about this DLC was the gameplay and yes fighting bosses where we thought were impossible like the Terra Nought within the uh, Keyblade Graveyard was pretty cool as Sora, it was fun. One complaint I had was that you replay the entire last section of the game and fight all the bosses, but it was through new perspectives like me fighting against Zigba with as well as Darker Riku with Riku, and that, that was pretty fun because I don't know, it feels uh, Riku is different. I don't know what it is, he just feels slower. I don't know why. Uh, in the Remind DLC compared to um, the original game, but he does way more damage, so that's pretty cool. And again, the, the one bad thing I really hated about this DLC was when you fought um, the enemies all over again. Like, here's me fighting alongside Mickey Mouse. I did that in the base game, and I do it here too. However, this fight was pretty interesting because, well, you played as Aqua, and... I mean, don't like playing as Aqua, to be fair, you know, uh, compared to all the stuff that uh, Sora has. And we played as Aqua within 0.2 Birth by Sleep, as well as within one part where you had to fight Vanitas in the story. I, it was just that um, this part, I wouldn't say I didn't like, but I did like the tag team-ups. Like you see Ventus uh, riding his Keyblade with the Ice um, Flyer over there, that, that was pretty cool. Other than that, it was fun, but honestly, as you can see, it didn't take me that long to get to the next phase, which was pretty cool. And then we have this. I really like this way you chose which to go to. Now, for the Aqua fight, I did choose Sora because I am much more of a 
damage dealer than a mage user. That's just my type of playstyle. But if you liked playing as Aqua, that's all on you. It depends on the character. But I do like the choice that they give of you playing as the character of the other people. So yeah, if you, I'll definitely play it again just to play as Aqua. And ho ho, Oathkeeper's OP. Then there's this fight. Oh, 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 I love this fight. Playing as Roxas is fun. It's just the double dash. I don't know why this double dash is so fun, but it is amazing. Like, look at this. Hey, this was fun. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, playing as Roxas was definitely uh, more my style. Very fast, very damage dealing. I really liked it. And I feel like if uh, there is a new update that will come where you can play as other characters during different scenarios or play certain like um, maybe like a bell arena place where you fight a lot of heartless at one time like the Olympus tournament that'd be pretty cool and you can pick any character I would play as Roxas but I love this team attack this was amazing the thinking of you of the this was pretty cool. This was just amazing. Um, I just love this attack because it was fun. And the only way to actually win this fight is to bring uh, Xemnas' health to a certain point. And this finisher was just amazing. Bam! And of course they played my favorite soundtrack, The Other Promise, in the background. And I love that theme. Also, dual wielding in Kingdom Hearts is OP as hell. I'm just gonna say that. Use Roxas. Anyway, Explorable Scala Art Kylum is amazing. It's a big area. There's like two main areas. So it's the area you first come in and then there's another area you go into where there's a lot of stuff that actually happens. Now, I was looking for secrets um, within this area. This is actually the second area. And this was pretty fun, you know, it looks beautiful. I just wanted to explore to find some treasure chests because there are treasure chests locations. I went inside to look deep and I saw symbols. Um, it looks like an orchestra, so maybe f to showcase that and language within Kingdom Hearts lore. And it was fun. It was really fun. And just dashing through everywhere was just amazing. Fighting the Heartless within Skalat Kylum. Uh, it's basically a mixture of everything. There's nobodies, there's um, Heartless, I think Unversed are there. So yeah, that's that was pretty fun. And this is my actual favorite area within Scala at Kylum. Now of course, as you can see, I actually got a treasure chest. But this is my favorite area because it reminded me of Hello Bastion back in Kingdom Hearts 1. Um, I think that I'm the only one who sees the connection, but yeah, it, it looks so much like that and that was my personal favorite area. I don't know why, because everyone hates the water section. I kind of liked it. Um, then we have this where we have to actually, it's a, it's a puzzle place. You have to collect Kyrie's hearts and there's five of it. And yeah, that, 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 it's, it's, it's basically one of those collector's parts and it, it was fun. It was really fun. And this was pretty cool too because it showed from Daybreak Town how it went to Scala at Kylum and you collected a piece of Kyrie's heart. And one of the fi and the final one you have to collect from another dark side because Law oh, oh does Tetsuya Nomura know that there's not enough dark sides in the Kingdom Hearts franchise. It's becoming a tradition. And then we have this right here. I loved it. This was amazing. Where you play as all of the Keyblade wielders and they have special interactions with each other. It was so fun. This Terra and Riku one is my personal favorite. Um, then we have like you have to attack and then protect. And it just attack. It does a lot of damage. And this was uh, an amazing attack. So uh, Aqua uses absolute zero and then uh, Lee just comes in there and then does his... He does his, what he does best and he burns it up and the the characters actually interact with each other talk to each other it was pretty fun because it was so it felt like everything was coming full circle and i loved that i i really love that about that section and then the, oh, oh this is <laughs> when ventus and roxas teamed up i lost my mind i was like tetsuya namora you're crazy old coot you're a great man you are that's what i thought and then the scene with mickey becoming basically the slowest walker ever was in there and yes we had to 
fill in key holes with our key blade and save the universe. I just spammed X, that's what I all did. I aimed everywhere and just spammed X, that's how you win this game. Oh my god, Kyrie is very hard to explain how she fights. She she can attack from far and I tried her out, she's fun. But I prefer my Sora, that's just me. However, I tried out, she is fun, but just not as fun for me. I prefer my Sora because, oh, oh, Sora has a lot of stuff to do. And they have a team attack, which I really did like that. That was pretty cool. And Kairi can do damage. Like, this right here, this is basically Sonic Blade, but, oh, oh that's that dude damage. Hey. And the fact she has a lot of spells was cool. One thing I really hated about this DLC is the fact they give you characters but you cannot swap out their equipment. And oh, hey, that, that becomes a problem later on. They give you limited items like <laughs> Kyrie only has a HP and neither high potion, my bad. And yeah, just those two. <laughs> That's the death sentence that is. <laughs> But that was basically it for the Remind portion, and yeah, it was pretty good. Um, it was a little bit short, but the other parts actually make up for that time. The Remind part of the Remind DLC is pretty fun, just a minor stuff over there. Such as if you want to go to the Limit Cut, you have to finish this first. So every time you want a new um, difficulty, you have to finish that, and then to go to this. But this was fun, I give it a 8 out of 10. That is the sound of a god. This DLC has such an amazing soundtrack. Oh my god, it's amazing. And we get to the data battles. And I love how they had this route. It makes it feel important because the only way to unlock the secret episode is if you fight all 13 of these bosses. And ho oh, oh, ho, that Shion one is amazing. I think this is my personal favorite fight within the data... Um, bosses, she's my favorite fight. She's the hardest. Um, well, not really the hardest. It really depends on how you play it. Like, I, I, I spam. You, you know how, if you know how to block, you, you'll be fine. But those beams take away your life. Not, not just life, your life bar itself. So, yeah, but if you just transform into something, your health is back. So you can just heal. Um, this was pretty fun. Um, in critical mode, I have only defeated one person. And that's um that's basically young Xehanort. And it took me three hours, and that's a really good thing. So I'm still gonna go back. Granted I'm level 44 on that save file, or 45, I don't know. But it was fun. And <laughs> dude, Oathkeeper is a beast and double form. Ho ho ho! This is a form that you need in your life. I feel like playing like I'm Roxas, and that's a very good thing. Because Roxas was was so fun to play as within Remind and you guys need to play it, it's, it's so fun and the Shion fight just took a lot out of you, she does a lot of damage and sometimes it's a little bit too much even for Sora. My hardest fight has to go to Xemnas cause this man pushes you down to the floor, he pushes you to walls, he's a big old bully he is but granted he's not really that hard to defeat once you understand his pattern but granted I am an idiot, so what do I know? I die a lot within video games. And that's the sad thing too, because sometimes you forget that you control mapped and you're caught in the tension and your mogul coins down and then they hit you. But of course, my fi the easiest fight for me was Young Xehanort. Uh, it was fun for me. It was, it was the first fight I did and it was pretty easy for me and I know he, he it depends on how you see it like I know uh, Vault Edit slash PlayStation the man who has helped me through the final part of this well not final part but the next entry uh, in this video he has helped me I helped him God that secret episode really took a bite out of us <laughs> but yeah it was it was it was um. This, he's easiest was, um, Dark, Riku, that, that, so that's cool, and mine was Young Xehanort, so that, that, it depends on the player, but overall, Limit Cut was a fun DLC, fun part of the DLC, it adds so much hours, especially if you're playing on critical mode, um, definitely giving this a 
9.5 out of 10. It was really fun. I just loved it. It was really cool. Yazora! Hey, 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 Yazora! My arch nemesis, this fight had me clinched. I was dying. I basically broke myself and my friend knows it. PlayStation slash Vault Edit. He knows it. Check, check, check out his gameplay. Oh. Uh, it's hell it is. But honestly, this is the best secret boss fight I have ever had. And yes, I'm even included in you, Linguin Will, because... Whoo! Whoo! This man, he can... He can take your items, he can take your drive, he can take your health, your MP. He even takes your Koopo coin and your weapon. This man's an utter beast. And Nomura said... That <laughs> he wanted us to cry in the secret boss, and well, he did. He did do that. And I must say, this man, he he has a control pattern, but it changes most of the time. Like um, normally he'd open up with an attack, like with a swing, so with lasers shooting at you. But sometimes he'll start with a death ball gripper, which I really hate. And yeah, it's just a fun boss fight. I really do. And it's it's a fun boss fight because there's not a lot of room to actually dodge. Well, there's a lot of room, but compared to the giant area that was the Linguin Will boss fight area, which was basically the Keyblade Graveyard, compared to that, this place is really small. Um, it's just basically a rooftop. And here's the thing: after you defeat uh, your Zora. Or whether you lose to your Zora, there is cutscenes. Now, within these cutscenes, it's very unclear what's going to happen in the next game. And we kind of got a glimpse to what the title might be. But that's only if you beat your Zora. And hey, that's not an easy task. It is not an easy task. Your Zora is definitely one of the hardest fights within the Kingdom Hearts series. If not, maybe the hardest fight within the Kingdom Hearts series. Again, I'm including Lingering Will. It is that good of a boss, you have to play it, and I know he's frustrating at times, but when you defeat him, it's so worth it. And your Zora, he wants to save Sora, but everyone is looking for Sora on the other side with Riku, and Leon, and Kairi, and the gang, all looking for Sora. And your Zora wants to save Sora, I said a lot of auras in that one sentence. God, Kingdom Hearts is so messed up. But, where is the story going? I don't know. But once you defeat uh, this, of course you do get those cutscenes. But also you get this area as a place for the data me meeting, the greeting place. That, that where you can take pictures and make memes. <laughs> that's cool. And yeah, that's pretty cool. And you unlock your Zora now. Granted, they are only... Two people can use in this area and that is Yazora and Sora which is cool it's very amazing that you get to do that because you can make awesome thumbnails or stuff like that like me I might use something from this um, data greeting for the thumbnail maybe not who knows but we'll see what happens data greeting is fun I never thought I would use this because well it's a photo mode type of thing but oh, oh can you create masterpieces of art and yes you can create fun stuff you can create balls of light and darkness or whatever you want and make them pose in different ways it's so fun look at this I just made this now while making for this video and also I made this for the one year anniversary for Kingdom Hearts 3, I hope this video goes out by then because I don't know of my upload. Um, but yeah, it's the one year anniversary or just past the one year anniversary for Kingdom Hearts 3. And I do wish them a happy one year anniversary and it's been such a fun journey. This Kingdom Hearts Remind added so much to the game and I definitely think it's worth the $30. However, there is a few drawbacks like... Um, the, the carrying over stuff like if you want to do the bosses the 13 bosses you need to finish Remind in order to do that and the thing is you have to play the whole thing all over again just to do that within a new save slot which is kind of annoying 
But of course there's one thing I really hate about Kinoa 3 is that is that there is very little save slots. Add more save slots, you get more gameplay. Honestly, this was a fun DLC. I recommend it because it is it's for everyone. And I definitely see people saying is it worth the $30? To me it is. It depends on how much you are willing to play it. Like, I am willing to play this thing on all the difficulties just to fight them in the limit cut uh, bosses to see how cool they are um, on each difficulty. Critical mode is hell, but I'm enjoying it. Um, it is fun. It is definitely something you should pick up. But of course, it does depend on you do you want to play it let me know in the comment section below if you did play it what did you think about it and tell me if you beat your zora first try i will let you know that you are lying because that is not a man you beat first try no one ever that, that's just lying that is and lying's bad but seriously it was fun i really hope you guys enjoyed this video um overall this kingdom Mastery remind gets a nine point yeah just nine out of ten because well it was fun I feel that it's pretty tedious that you have to play the entire story all over again just to go to the limit cut and again um, there's just very little save slots so you might have to delete some saves which is very irritating however let me know what you guys would rate it in the comment section down below leave a like helps me a lot comment down in the comment section down below what you guys think and share with friends because sharing is caring and most importantly subscribe to comment for line balls anyway guys this is lightning h8 and as always a blaze out